All right, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of the Complete Game Podcast. I'm your host, Casey Guerin. And today I'm going to be, not live, but I am recording myself in a, in a mock draft here on Yahoo. So what I'm going to be doing here for this episode is I'm screen sharing on Zoom. I can, uh, I, you guys can all see my screen here if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on, if you're listening to the podcast you can go to YouTube, type in the Complete Game Podcast on YouTube, should show up. And if you go to YouTube and, and search that, you should be able to see myself drafting. You should be able to see the draft board, the draft room here on Yahoo. I just joined a random uh, Yahoo mock draft. As you can see, see, starting in about a minute and 30 seconds. And uh, what I really wanted to do here, I know about myself, I, I was trying to get somebody else to to get in here but I, I need to get some content out before you guys start drafting for real and it's hard to to get somebody else to get their schedule to align with yours and hop on and, and get two or more people doing a mock draft online so uh what i'm doing here today is i'm doing a mock draft so the point of this just just for everybody listening out there is I, I want to kind of break down picks. It's it's easy to go on a, a podcast in front of a mic and kind of talk rankings and talk players and things like that. But I, I want to give that practical look. I, I want you to see what I'm thinking during a draft. And not that my opinion um, means everything to some people, but I, I at least want to give some people uh, my thought process and, and how I break down drafting picks and, and how I kind of go about drafting a team and building a team and building a roster. So draft's about to start here. It's a 12 team league. In this one, I'm drafting out of the 12th slot. I didn't really know where to draft that that would be best for just for viewers and listeners and whatever. So I, I didn't want to pick the one-on-one. -on -one. I, I wanted to pick a kind of a later pick so it's not really an obvious pick with McCaffrey or Barkley or, or any of those guys. I didn't want it to be an obvious pick, so I picked a late pick. I just picked the turn at 12. So the draft just started. If you are listening on, if you're listening to the podcast, I'm going to try and tell you who kind of has been picked, who's go, who's coming up, who's uh, who's on the board when I'm about to pick. So top two, McCaffrey, Barkley, go obviously. So I'm going to try and let you guys know that are listening kind of who I want to let you know who's available, who I'm thinking about drafting and hopefully people that are watching on YouTube, you can kind of see the draft board uh, go here. You can see in the bottom right who's been selected and you can see right in the middle of the board. You can see my team right here on the right if you're on YouTube. So that, that'll give you that visual. But like I said, I'm going to try and help. Um, I'm going to try and help those people who maybe aren't watching and are just listening to the podcast. So pretty standard so far. Miles Sanders going in the first round there. Pretty standard. Hopefully this is a, a Yahoo draft. That isn't uh, silly. Hopefully there's no stupid picks. Usually there is in these uh, Yahoo drafts with people. But we're getting, we're getting pretty close to, to draft time. Josh Jacobs goes in the first round. Elayer goes. So I'm up. I have the options, Tyree Kill, Joe Mixon, Julio Jones, Kenyon Drake, Chubb, Kittle, Kelsey, Hopkins, Aaron Jones. So I'm a huge running back guy. I'm a huge running back drafter. I am going to push the button on Joe Mixon. And I am going to also take Nick Chubb. So I have two running backs. I have my running back set right now. Joe Mixon, as I've said in other episodes, I, I love Joe Mixon this year. They upgraded the offensive line. Well, they, they, they get Jonah Williams back, the first-round offensive tackle from 2019. They get him back. They have a better quarterback now with Joe Burrow. They have more weapons on the outside to kind of take the pressure off of Joe Mixon. And with Mixon in Cincinnati, it's really been – he really hasn't gotten that chance to break out. He hasn't had a good offensive line. He hasn't really had good quarterback play. A.J. Green's been injured. So so Mixon's kind of been the focal point for defenses. And then Nick Chubb, as I've kind of said before, too, in other episodes as well, um, Nick Chubb, he could get his workload eaten into by Kareem Hunt a little bit this year. But uh, people really forget how good of a football player Nick Chubb is. 
Last year, he finished eighth in PPR scoring leagues. He was fourth in touches and only caught like 36 passes. This year, he gets two new offensive linemen, gets Jack Conklin from Tennessee, who was a huge reason for Derrick Henry's breakout last year. So uh, with two new offensive tackles, there's really no reason at all. And Kevin Stefanski, new offensive coordinator, he is a extremely run-heavy coach. So there's really no reason this season, as long as Kareem Hunt stays away a little bit, even if Kareem Hunt gets traded, there, there's really no reason why Chubb shouldn't be a smash this year. Chubb's probably going to be this, one of the safest options in fantasy football. He, he's going to get the ball on early downs. He's going to get his touches. He's definitely going to get his touches. So uh, I, I like Chubb a lot this year. And we have our first stupid pick. We have Chris Carson. He went 21st overall before Austin Eckler. Everything else is pretty standard. Um, that pick is, is really terrible. Chris Carson that early. That's a bad pick. But uh, we are just starting the third round now. James Conner just went off the board to end the second round, I believe. So we are at pick 25. James Conner just went off the board. Pretty much everybody else, uh, pretty much all the normal guys, there's really no surprises other than that Chris Carson pick. But uh, it's a Yahoo League. Sorry, I'm not in in some crazy elite fantasy on some elite fantasy site or whatever. I'm just doing a Yahoo mock draft. But uh, I at least want to see, at least want to show people what, what my thought process is in a draft and, and kind of mess around a little bit, see what kind of players I'm interested in. I'm a huge fan of the RB, RB start this year. I, running back gets thin extremely quick. If I would much rather personally have uh, Patrick Mahomes goes off the board here in the third round. I would personally much rather have the what I'm trying to say is is that the second the kind of the wide receiver twos the receivers you can get in like round five round four five six those receivers are much better than the running backs you can get in round four five six and those kind of middle rounds so I would rather get the elite better running backs early when there's still going to be some good value wide receivers left later on in, in those middle rounds. So I'd rather go for the running backs early, get those elite running backs that you can lock into your lineup and then kind of forget about the running backs until later. We'll, we'll go through some upside picks later. I'll try and stay through the whole draft here, assuming it, it doesn't take forever because uh, we're, we're drafting with people live here. But uh, yeah, I'm a huge believer in drafting running backs early. I just had my first draft of the year, my first real draft took Chubb and Eckler first round, second round at the 11, pick 11. So I, I usually tend to start running backs in, in all my leagues. We'll see how the board falls in this mock draft. I'll try and mix it up a little bit here. So we have one, two, three, four, four, five picks until I'm up again. Still on the board right now. Melvin Gordon, DJ Moore, Juju, Jonathan Taylor, AJ Brown, Todd Gurley, those guys in that area. Um, Gurley just went, Terry McLaurin just went pretty early third round and I'm going to, hopefully nobody takes DJ Moore here. I'm going to try and push the button on DJ Moore. Still wait. I'm, I'm waiting for, for these people to pick. That's the tough part about doing a mock draft. Oh, and DJ Moore goes, that sucks. So I think what I'm going to do here is. There's really no good receivers left. I'm kind of pissed that there's really no top receivers left. I don't really love Juju here. I don't really – I love A.J. Brown, but not as my number one wide receiver here. Um, let's, let's look at the wide receivers. Oh, Robert Woods is still there. I don't know why he's ranked so low. Melvin Gordon just went. I am going to – so we have Juju, A.J. Brown, Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley, Cooper Cup, Tyler Lockett, D.J. Chark, Metcalf, Sutton, Woods. I don't know why Yahoo has Woods ranked so low. Um, Woods is one of the most consistent producers in fantasy. I'm going to push the button on Woods. So we have Mixon, Chubb, Woods, and I'm going to take another receiver. I think uh, between Juju and A.J. Brown, I don't know who to take. I, I love them both. But uh, I'm going to, for this mock draft, I'm going to draft A.J. Brown. And just kind of the, the, just, you can take either in that spot. Um, 
just for the mock draft, and if I was doing a, a normal draft, if, if this was my league draft, I would probably pass on a receiver and take Jonathan Taylor there. I think Jonathan Taylor has our running back one upside. He could be one of the best running backs in the league if they give him the ball. But uh, for this mock draft, I, I just kind of want to talk about some players here. So we have Mixon, we have Chubb, we have, we have our two running backs set. And I took Woods because Woods is one of the most consistent players in fantasy. I, I want that consistency in my wide receiver one slot. And then A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown's probably like my second favorite receiver in the league already behind D.J. Moore. I love Moore and I love A.J. Brown. So it's just A.J. Brown. It's just Corey Davis. There's really no other receivers there at all. I don't even think I can name the other receivers on the roster in Tennessee. So uh, I'm taking A.J. Brown. I'm a huge A.J. Brown fan. He's unbelievable after the catch. What he did last season as a rookie is unbelievable. And it really doesn't scare me off that the Titans are run heavy. He, Ryan Tannehill, it, it's kind of a run heavy offense with Derrick Henry. Um, Tannehill was still solid last year. I don't know what the targets are going to look like for A.J. Brown. Hopefully he's going to go over 100 targets again. Or I don't I don't remember if he did last year, but hopefully he can get over 100 targets this year because the ball in in the air isn't going to anybody else, and his after the catch ability is outstanding. Um, some people might, most people will probably take Juju Smith Schuster there, but uh, we saw Juju last year. Even it, well, Big Ben is coming off an injury, and we know with Big Ben that Juju could be one of the best receivers in fantasy. And it's, you can take him there. It's completely justifiable taking him in the third, fourth round. Completely justified if you want to take Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, you're getting a receiver that could be one of the best receivers in fantasy in the third and fourth round, which is great value. But we saw with, with Big Ben out last year, Juju was, was awful. He did almost nothing. And we can't rely on Big Ben at, at whatever age he is now 40 years old after arm surgery coming back and being healthy for the full season we can't count on that I'm not counting on that so instead of taking Juju knowing Juju was was extremely poor without Big Ben knowing Big Ben is coming back off arm surgery off an arm issue knowing that I, I'm not really pushing the button on Juju right now uh, Fournette just went Fournette. I don't know why Fournette's going so low in the fourth round. He just went and it's a 12 team league too. And he just went in the fourth round. I don't know why he keeps dropping. I, uh, if I'm in a regular draft, if I'm in a real draft, I honestly could start. I honestly, if this was my draft at home and th this was like my league with, that I put money into, I would have started my draft mix and chub and then at the three, four turn, I would have taken Jonathan Taylor and Fournette and started four straight running backs. But uh, for the purpose of this, this episode, this podcast, this, whatever you want to call it, this mock draft, I, I'm not going to do that. Um, even though that's what I normally would do in a league, I, I would definitely start four running backs in a row. I have no problem doing that. Looking at the board still with the wide receivers, uh, DJ Chark's still there, Sutton, Parker, T.Y. Hilton. Not really guys I'm comfortable having as my number one wide receiver, but I'll, I'll take some dip at the wide receiver position as long as I have four stud running backs on my roster. But for this, for this uh, mock draft, for this kind of roster construction setup, I want to, I want to show you guys kind of what a, a good roster setup construction is. Uh, I don't want to say that my strategy is – is like cookie cutter. Nobody should copy my strategy. Do what you feel is best. But uh, I like to start with the two running backs. And then I, I like pushing the button on Woods. I like grabbing Robert Woods. He's a safe option. He's consistent. If, uh, if the Rams are running more 12 personnel with two tight ends, that means there's really only going to be two tight ends on the field all the time. So uh, that means Woods probably won't come off the field. He's going to get, uh, he's going to still have a bunch of targets. So I like Robert Woods. I like AJ Brown. We're coming up on the round five, six turn here. So Swift and Shark just went. Uh, Swift and Shark, I would have drafted both of them if it comes to that. Shark last year, a huge breakout year. We expect Minshew to take another step forward as a sophomore, second year quarterback. I expect him to at least. Hopefully that young offensive line can take another step forward. I'm, I'm all in on DJ Shark this year. So Shark's gone. 
Um, let's see who else is gone. DeAndre Swift is gone, the rookie in Detroit. I, I'm drafting him in most of my leagues too. David Johnson, Keenan Allen. So what we have left, we have Cortland Sutton, Kareem Hunt, Kyler Murray, Tyler Higby, Cam Akers, Devontae Parker. So we, we don't really have many great options left. Um, I'm a huge weight on quarterback guy. I'm not going to take one of these quarterbacks. Murray and Watson are still there in, in uh, round six here. Round five, end of round five. So I am going to – I'm going to push the button on Devontae Parker, 1,200 1200 yards last year, nine touchdowns. I'm going to push the button on Parker, and I'm going to draft. I'm going to pass on Kareem Hunt here and take Cam Akers. So where we're at right now is I have Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb, and then Woods, A.J. Brown, Devontae Parker, Cam Akers. So let's go over those picks uh, real fast. So with Parker and and with Devontae Parker last year, he finally broke out in his fifth season. And with Parker, it, it's kind of funny that he was so good last year and he's still going in like round five or round six in fantasy drafts. He's still not getting drafted very high. And with Preston Williams coming off an ACL tear. Alan Hearns opted out. Albert Wilson opted out. So they have two guys gone. They have one guy coming off an ACL tear. So really the only receiving options in Miami right now are Devontae Parker and Mike Kosicki, maybe Matt Breda out of the backfield. But uh, what, what that means for Parker is that Parker's going to be on the field all the time. He's going to get a ton of targets. Kyler Murray goes off the board here in the sixth round. Um, maybe I could have push the button on Murray or Watson there. I don't have a problem with anybody doing that because that's pretty late round five, round six to get one of those quarterbacks, uh, two of the probably elite quarterbacks this year. But uh, like I said, I'm a weight on a QB kind of guy. I'd rather get my running backs, get my wide receiver straightened out before I start taking a quarterback. So uh, but yeah, like I said about Parker, two guys opted out. One guy is injured or, or coming off a, a serious injury. So we have Parker, he's never going to come off the field now as long as he's healthy. And Ryan Fitzpatrick now has that rapport with him. Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to put the ball into traffic. His reliable option is going to be Parker. Anytime he's under pressure or whatever, needs a big play, he knows he can just go to Devontae Parker now with those other guys gone and, and or injured. So uh, he, he could, Devontae Parker could see a bunch of targets this year, which I'm, I'm excited about. And you're getting number one receiver for Ryan Fitzpatrick, who's going to throw the ball no matter what, throw the ball into traffic. Um, you're getting his number one wide receiver when there's not really any other options around there. We have um, A.J. Green just went, T.Y. Hilton, Matt Ryan, Deshaun Watson, Darren Waller. So these round six, round seven guys, we are into round seven now. Hunter Henry just went. So we have some tight ends going now. Still going to wait on my tight end, I think. We have – so we're in round seven. Still quite a ways off of my pick. Um, let's go into the Cam Akers pick here. So with Cam Akers, it's it's the Rams that we're excited about. It's Sean McVay that we're excited about. And I, I, I'm not all in on Cam Akers because it's not fair – to discredit Darrell Henderson, the rookie out of Memphis last year. It's not fair to discredit any player for having a, a bad rookie season. It, it's your first year in the NFL. It, there's no reason to discredit any player for a bad rookie year. Oh, we got some auto picks going. I'm going to be up soon. But uh, yeah, it's a, I'll, I'll go over acres really fast. It's not, it's not fair to discredit anybody. He's one of the all-time leaders in yards per carry in college. He could still get touches this year, but uh, Cam Akers is unbelievable. He's a superior talent. Florida State had a top ten, bottom 10 offensive line in college football last year, and he was still a monster producer. He's a three down back. He can catch out of the backfield, and I fully expect him at least by halfway end of the year to fully produce and be the workhorse. I'll get more into him in a second. I'm about to pick. Um, so on the board right now, we have Brita, Dobbins, James White, Stafford, Deontay Johnson, Marvin Jones, guys like that. 
Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you can kind of see me play around with the board here. Um, I'm going to go, let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to take Mike Gesicki in the seventh, and I'm going to take Deontay Johnson here in the eighth round. Um, yep, I'm going to do that. So back to Cam Akers really fast, and then I'll get into these other picks. Akers was uh, unreal at Florida State, even with terrible blocking. He, he was solid. He, he was a great rusher, even with poor blocking. He, he ha fully has a chance as a rookie in Sean McVay's offense to be a solid fantasy option. I think his ceiling is capped just because of the – his ceiling is capped because their offensive line is, is not good at all. But if he is the starter for Sean McVay's offense, he will be a great fantasy option. So I just pushed the button on – Mike Gesicki, if you didn't listen to my tight end podcast, Mike Gesicki is my number one breakout tight end this year. It's his third year. Same thing with Parker. Gesicki is going to be really the only the only solid option there in the passing game in Miami. Ryan Fitzpatrick's not afraid to throw the ball. Gesicki had some great games last year. He's one of the most athletic tight ends to ever come out of college football. And that kind of that third year tight end breakout, I think it, it's coming this year for him, for Mike Gesicki. His first year, he was terrible. His second year last year, started to have some better games. And I've kind of been, not through stats, but I've kind of been pretty solid at, at guessing the breakout tight ends the last few years. Three years ago, I, I, I kind of said Ertz was going to be the guy. Two years ago, I said Kittle was going to be the guy. Last year, I kind of, I said Darren Waller, Aaron, Austin Hooper were going to be the guys. And, and those all worked out. Um, I, I don't, like I said, I don't really have any stats behind that, but uh, I, I'm, been getting pretty good at picking out who the breakout tight ends are going to be and I, I would rather take running backs receivers early in the draft and, and find a breakout tight end later and I think Gesicki's the guy this year in Miami with Fitzpatrick he's going to be the number two option in the passing game there that third year breakout extremely athletic almost like another wide receiver and then I also took Deontay Johnson passed on some guys um, let's see here. Let me look at the board and just kind of see who I passed on. Let me find my pick. Um, okay, so Deontay Johnson. So, all right, so I, I passed on Dobbins. Um, I don't, I don't know what Dobbins' role is this year as a rookie. Mark Ingram really hasn't gotten hurt much in the last few years. He really wasn't hurt at all last year. He was, he was on the injury report and still played at the end of the year. Mark Ingram really doesn't miss a lot of games. So without Ingram on the field, I really don't know what Dobbins' role is right now. Ingram, this is the last year of his contract. You could see Dobbins take over next year, but I don't really see him. I don't know what his role is now. So I opted for Deontay Johnson. I just missed Will Fuller. Otherwise, I probably would have taken Will Fuller. Um, I, I like Will Fuller. As long as he's healthy, he's going to be the number one for Deshaun Watson. I took Deontay Johnson, and round round eight is a little early for Johnson. Round seven was a little early for Gesicki, but I didn't really like some of the other options there. Deontay Johnson last year was number one in the NFL, not just in rookies, just number one in the NFL in, in target separation. So that means when he was getting targeted, he had the most average yards of separation from defenders. And he was producing with quarterbacks like Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph. So if he can produce with those guys, um, what's he going to do with Big Ben if he's healthy? So I, I like Deontay Johnson. Round eight is a little early, but he's a good sleeper pick this year. He has some upside if, if Big Ben comes back. Um, going into the next pick here, so we have Tevin Coleman, Marlon Mack, Antonio Gibson, Darrell Henderson, Big Ben, Alexander Madison. Here are some guys here. Wide receivers, Crowder, John Brown, Sterling Shepard, Anthony Miller, Brandon Cook, C.D. Lamb, Mike Williams, Justin Jefferson, Christian Kirk. Running backs. I'm, I need a – I might take one of each again. We'll see. But running backs, not really many options that I like here. 
Um, okay. Round nine. Uh, Yahoo's rankings, it's hard. You kind of got to find guys because uh, not everybody is. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to star Trey Edmonds. I meant to star Chase Edmonds. So I'm taking Chase Edmonds here in the ninth round. Um, let me go back to all players here. Let's see who else I can take. Shit. Um, wide receivers. I'm going to take 10 seconds. Oh, crap. I hate the stupid timer. All right. Christian Kirk, I took. So we are through 10. We're through 10 rounds. I I started with Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb, went to Robert Woods, A.J. Brown, and then I took Devontae Parker, Devontae Parker, Cam Akers, went Mike Gesicki, um, Deontay Johnson, and just took Chase Edmonds and Christian Kirk, back-to-back -back Arizona players. Chase Edmonds, Chase Edmonds is the kind of player you want to draft this year because – we have never seen Kenyon Drake be a starter, a workhorse for a full season. We've only seen it for a couple games at the end of the year. So if we've never seen it for a full season before, that means we don't know if he can do it for a full season. If we don't, if he, if we don't know if he can do it for a full season, that means there's value to be had from whoever the backup is. If the Cardinals run the most plays in the league, then Edmonds will might even have some some touches every game and, and carve out a role. But if Drake can't be the guy long term, like for a full season, if Drake gets injured or whatever, I don't think Edmonds is a straight up handcuff. I, I think Edmonds could find a role if they run all these plays like they like they did last year, like they say they're gonna do going forward. I think Edmonds could have a could have a role. We saw him last year against the Giants have like three touchdowns in that game where David Johnson was fake active. I love Chase Edmonds, and I went and got Christian Kirk, too. Um, people are forgetting that Christian Kirk is a really good athlete. He, he had a foot problem last year. If that foot problem continues, I'm not going to be high on him, but if he's healthy going into the year, I could see Hopkins kind of take away some of the, that pressure, some of that number one coverage. Kirk is a, is a 1B option. He's not an alpha receiver. He's not a 1A Hopkins type. Last year, he was kind of in that role, which is why he wasn't really that great. But now Hopkins, Hopkins is going to take all the number one coverage away. Um, Hopkins is going to take those number one corners away. Kirk's still athletic. I think Kirk is still a really good football player. I like Christian Kirk a lot. He's going to be. He's still going to be the number two. Cardinals are going to pass a lot. And I, I took Edmonds and Kirk here. I want a piece of that Cardinals offense, especially with Hopkins, especially with Kyler Murray in the second year. They drafted an offensive tackle, so the offensive line will be a little better. Drafting pieces and good offenses, that's my thought process here. We have um, we have two Cardinals players. I have two Rams players. Um, I'm trying to get pieces of good offenses. Uh, I, you can argue that with, uh, with some guys like the Miami guys, but uh, Mike Kosicki and Devontae Parker are the, the top options there in Miami for a quarterback that can, or that's going to throw the ball into traffic and, and sling it around. So I like those guys too. But uh, yeah, Kirk and Edmonds, really good picks. Um, we are in round 11. I still don't have a quarterback. And I will probably take one right now. On the board for quarterback, I have Baker Mayfield, Daniel Jones, Jared Goff, Cam Newton, Kirk Cousins, Ryan Tannehill, Joe Burrow, Jimmy G, Phillip Rivers. Still a bunch of options that aren't that bad at all. Uh, I'm a I'm not really a big believer in drafting quarterbacks early. Like I said, I probably could have pushed the button on Watson or Kyler Murray there in like the sixth round, but I didn't. So uh, just another thing I want to say is that after I had my starters in place, so uh, Mix and Chubb, Woods, Brown, Kasicki, Parker, after those, uh, after those starters are in place, everyone else you're drafting after your starters are, are on your team – are going to be on your bench anyway. So after the fifth, sixth round of your draft, shoot for upside. Draft guys that are going to win you your league. It, it's good to have one or two, three guys on your bench who you can plug in for bye weeks and stuff. But uh, if you already have your starters in place, go ahead and, and start shooting for upside. So on my bench, I have Akers, could be an upside rookie. Deontay Johnson, 
upside second year guy. Edmonds, upside play. I think Kirk has upside in that offense to start shooting for upside. So I'm um, about to pick in round 11. I'm going to take a quarterback here. And I am going to take Cam Newton. We have Newton. I'm going to look at another running back. We are going to go, let's see, Pollard, Duke Johnson, Damian Harris, Naheem Hines, Keyshawn Vaughn, Sony Michelle, Justin Jackson. I'm going to take Duke Johnson. So, oh, wow. This team isn't good for bye weeks. Duke Johnson, round eight, Kirk, or bye week eight. Kirk by week eight, Edmonds by week eight, Deontay Johnson by week eight. I have three, four guys by week nine. Oh boy. Oh well, good thing this isn't real. So uh I took Cam Newton. If this was if this like if this was a home league, I would probably draft another quarterback, but I wanted to draft Cam Newton here to kind of explain the pick. So Cam Newton, if Cam Newton is healthy. Cam Newton could be a, a locked in top 10, top five quarterback in fantasy football. He, he's going to be top 10 if he's rushing, if he's healthy, if that arm is healthy. And if you can get a quarterback with top 10 upside in the 11th and 12th round, which I just did, then there's no reason why you shouldn't push the button. If Cam Newton, if you draft him and he's hurt, so what? You can just drop him. You didn't waste anything in the 12th, 11th round. You, you wasted nothing. You, you didn't spend any sort of significant draft capital on him at all. Um, um, definitely just draft Cam. I think draft him at the end of your draft. I don't recommend drafting him as your starter. I did in this mock draft. I have him as my starter in my fantasy league, but I'm a little bit more bold. I wouldn't recommend it to everyone out there listening or watching. I don't, I don't recommend drafting Newton as your only quarterback. I, I'm I'm a believer in him. I'm a I'm a believer in him in fantasy this year. So, and like I said, if, if he's bad, if I start him week one and he's bad, then I can just drop him and I can pick up somebody else like Kirk Cousins or Philip Rivers, Rivers or somebody like that. I can just drop him. Gardner Minshew is a good breakout tight end candidate this year. You can always pick up Jimmy G. Teddy Bridgewater could have a big year with all those weapons in Carolina. So with Cam Newton, you you could potentially get top 10 quarterback in fantasy in the 11th and 12th round. And that's some of the best value you can, you can possibly find in fantasy drafts this year. He has, if you, if you look at Cam Newton this year, he has the best coach in the NFL in NFL history. So they're, they're going to help him out. They're going to find a way to make plays for him. They're going to find a way to make this offense suit Cam Newton's skill set as long as Newton is the starter Cam Newton has the best coach in NFL history coaching him. He has the best weapons he's ever had, even though that's not saying much because he had Calvin Benjamin, Devin Funches, guys like that, Ted Ginn. He, he went to the Super Bowl with those guys. But now he has Nikhil Harry, who I like, Julian Edelman, obviously great, reliable slot option. Um, two new, two rookie tight ends. So those guys aren't that exciting, but he does have at least some decent weapons. He has Edelman, he has James White out of the backfield. And uh, like I said, he is the best coach in the history of the NFL. So Cam Newton, after some time off, after a season off to get healthy, if he is healthy, Cam Newton healthy with the best coach in the NFL with some decent weapons could be primed for a top five, top 10 overall fantasy season. And you can get him late in your draft. So you might as well shoot for the upside there, go for the upside. And like I said, if, if he flames out, if he stinks, if he gets hurt, you can just drop him right to the waivers, pick up somebody else and just find somebody else on, on waivers. Is it, um, Cam Newton, I would really only draft in a one quarterback league though. If you're in like a two quarterback league, I wouldn't, but a uh, one quarterback league, definitely draft Cam Newton. I, I drafted him in, uh, in this, I, I got him in my in my re, in my regular league, whatever you want to call it, my main league. I got him. So, and then I took uh, Duke Johnson. I'll go over the Duke Johnson pick in a second. I have one bench spot left in this, and there's a kicker defense. I don't play kicker defense. I don't play kickers in any of my leagues. My leagues have defenses, but not kickers. 
So I have one more bench spot. Um, let's see who we can get here. Oh my gosh, it's round 13. TJ Hawkinson's still there. Taking TJ Hawkinson. So now all I have left is kicker defense. So those don't matter. I'm not even going to talk about kicker defense. So my last pick was TJ Hawkinson. I didn't even look who else was on the board. TJ Hawkinson is my number two breakout tight end for the year. TJ Hawkinson has top 10 overall draft capital. Unbelievable size adjusted athleticism. His first game in the NFL, he, he was unbelievable. He had like 100 yards and a touchdown. And like I said about Kasicki, sometimes it takes guys three years to break out as a tight end in, in the NFL. And he had a breakout game in his first ever NFL game. And with, with top 10 overall draft capital, you know he's going to get fed. Matthew Stafford is another guy who's not afraid to throw the ball around, to put the ball into traffic, let his players make plays. I'm not a huge advocate for having two tight ends on your roster, but uh, we have solid running backs here. And I don't feel the need to, I, I didn't feel the need to take anybody else that was available. Some guys that went after Hawkinson, some guys that have went after Hawkinson are, let me check. So after Hawkinson, it's Jack Doyle, Emmanuel Sanders, Curtis Samuel, Jerry Judy, and kickers and defenses are going now. But uh, so Hawkinson, I, I think, is a huge potential to be a breakout guy this year too. Top 10 overall draft capital. So he, he's going to be a three down tight end kind of guy. He's going to be on the field. He can block, he can, he can catch. And if he stays healthy, he was banged up last year. If he stays healthy, he could be the other breakout tight end this year. I think it's Kasicki and I think it's Hawkinson. And I think John U. Smith can be in that tier. But I don't consider John U. Smith as high of a breakout candidate as Hawkinson or, uh, or Gesicki. So I took them both in my, I really, I don't know. You can take two, two tight ends if you want. If you're going to take two tight ends, the only scenario where I would take two tight ends on my roster are this scenario right here, where uh, you have these two guys that are the two biggest breakout uh, tight end candidates. These are my, these are my two biggest breakout tight end guys for 2020. The only scenario where I would draft two tight ends is where I'm taking both of these guys. But uh, definitely get at least one of them. I don't uh, please don't please don't let anyone else in your league scoop them up. Don't let somebody else grab them and you get screwed at tight end. If you aren't drafting Travis Kelsey, then I would recommend drafting Gesicki or Hawkinson this year. And those are really the only three guys I'm trying to draft. I'm really not even drafting Travis Kelsey. I won't even draft him. The only tight ends I'm going after this year are Gesicki, Hawkinson, and Jonu Smith. I, I will take Jonu Smith if I have to. Ian Thomas, maybe, I don't even, we have to see what he does, but Ian Thomas is the starter in Carolina now. If you haven't heard of his name before, he's extremely athletic. But uh, I, I'm really not going to leave any draft without one of Gesicki, Hawkinson, one of those two, or Jonu Smith, one of those three. I'm not going to leave my draft with any of those three. So uh, just to go over the team one more time, um, I, I actually still have to do go over the Duke Johnson pick. So with Duke Johnson, Duke Johnson, David Johnson is the starter is the starter there now. David Johnson has we saw him just have injury problems the whole back half of the season last year. He looked awful, he looked sluggish and injured and he's he's getting older now. If he can't stay healthy, hopefully Duke Johnson can get the ball. Duke Johnson has been one of the highest yards per carry, yards per reception kind of efficiency metric guys in the league. That yards per touch is super high. Um, hold on, I have to put a last pick in here. But uh, yeah, Duke Johnson is kind of one of those guys where if, if David Johnson gets injured, hopefully they give him the ball and give him touches. I, I hope so, because he's been one of the most efficient running backs in the league the last few seasons. And it would be a shame to not see him at least get a chance to be a primary back. We haven't even seen him be given a chance. And just almost like the same situation as I was talking about earlier with Edmonds. Um, it's a David Johnson's a question mark with his, with his injuries. Now he's a question mark. 
Bill O'Brien's a question mark. And if David Johnson can't stay healthy, if David, if the, there's a really good chance that David Johnson is washed. I don't think that he is, but there is a chance. You have to look at all options in fantasy football. There is a chance that that David Johnson could be washed. He could have injury problems now. That that back we saw last year, his back not, might not be all right. And we you have to look at all options. You have to be objective, and you have to take a take a step out, zoom out, and look at the situation. If David Johnson isn't going to be healthy, there's a realistic scenario where Duke Johnson could step into a big role in a good offense in in Houston with Deshaun Watson there. And those are kind of guys you want to pick late in your draft. You want to draft guys that like Duke Johnson has a role. He's going to get touches. He has a role and he can be an elite. He's not just a handcuff. He has a role and he could be an elite running back in fantasy football. If David Johnson gets injured, Chase Edmonds has a role and could still be an elite running back in fantasy football. Cam Akers will have a role and he could be an elite fantasy football running back. Um, just like I said earlier in the draft, after your starters are in place on the bench, there's no reason to take guys like Adrian Peterson or things like that who are just going to chill out on your bench. There's no reason to draft guys that have no upside because they're going to be on your bench anyway. So if you're going to have guys sitting on your bench, they might as well, well be high upside league, league winning guys. And in every league, I'm drafting league winning guys on my bench. Cam Akers could be a league winner if he's the starter for the Rams. Um, Deontay Johnson, like I said, number one in the NFL in target separation as a rookie with, with Big Ben back. He produced with, produced with uh, Mason Rudolph and Doc Hodges and gets Big Ben back. So Deontay Johnson has unbelievable upside. Could start on the outside since Juju's a slot guy. Chase Edmonds, I just said, upside. Christian Kirk really isn't a huge ceiling play. I will I will say that he's not a huge ceiling play, but could be a, a super solid option. Like I said, we want uh, players in good offenses. Duke Johnson, I just mentioned, mentioned TJ Hawkinson, I talked about. So uh, just wrapping it up here. So I'm going to go through my team once again. Cam Newton, Robert Woods. Um, this is just going down the Yahoo thing. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my team here. But uh, Cam Newton, Robert Woods, A.J. Brown, Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb, Mike Gesicki, Devontae Parker, skip kicker, skip defense, bench, Cam Akers, Deontay Johnson, Chase Edmonds, Christian Kirk, Duke Johnson, T.J. Hawkinson. So I, I have an upside quarterback play. I have two extremely I – have, I have Woods, who's an extremely reliable receiving option, A.J. Brown has unbelievable upside. So he has stability and upside, A.J. Brown. He's going to be the unquestioned number one alpha. He's going to get targets. And uh, he, we could see his ceiling. Last year was only a rookie, so we don't even know what his ceiling as a player is yet. If he gets more targets, he could be even better this year. So that's a floor and ceiling play. Mix in floor and ceiling play. Nick Chubb, high, high floor play. Um, if Kareem Hunt ever gets traded, Nick Chubb is a high floor, high ceiling play. Kasicki is a high ceiling play. Parker, high floor and high ceiling because he's the unquestioned number one option. And then all those bench guys have upside, like I said, except for really Kirk, but all those guys have league winning upside. After you get your starters, draft for league winning upside. And I hope you, whoever is listening or watching, hope you enjoyed this. Um, please, if you're listening or watching, drop some feedback. Maybe just let me know. Yeah, on Twitter at Casey underscore G14. Let me know if this is something you want to see more of. Whatever slot you want me to draft out of, I can draft, I can do a draft from a middle slot, an early slot. That's what I'm planning on doing. So this one was a late slot. I can draft from a middle slot, from an early slot. So just uh, let me know. Give me some feedback. And if you're listening on the podcast, go to YouTube, type in the Complete Game Podcast. If you go to YouTube and, and watch the video, I'm screen sharing on Zoom, so you'll be able to see the draft board. You'll be able to see my team, and you'll be able to see all of that, the, the draft room, the draft board, and all that stuff. So you'll be able to see that. And thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this mock draft, uh, me breaking down my picks, breaking down some players, uh, just showing my thought process through some picks, showing you what I did, some team building, maybe some picks that uh, – I would have changed, maybe someone else I would have took if, if this was a draft for money, maybe some things I would have done different if this was my home league. But uh, I wanted to draft 
uh, do a do a mock draft for everybody out there. Go through my thought process and my thought process and my picks. So thanks again. I will be releasing some new episodes um, shortly. I don't know if I'm going to release this one before or after my wide receiver projections. I just dropped running back projections. So I still have to do wide receiver projections. Still planning on doing a must own or must draft player podcast. Still planning on doing uh, another mock draft, middle round, another mock draft, early, early pick. So uh, I still have a bunch of things in the works. So stay tuned for those things and take care.